Hi, my name is Daniel. This video will be presenting my paper Mass Based Short Term Selection of Classifiers in Data Streams that will be covered in the EJCNN 2033. I wrote this paper alongside my collaborators Fabrício Nembrek and João Paul Bardal. We are from the Pontifico Catholic University of Paraná in Brazil. Well, in standard machine learning, known as batch learning, we have all instances stored in memory. That means that we can have access to instances whenever we want. And uh, we can do, for example, to evaluate these models, we can um, do a holdout evaluation, for example, when we have test and trained uh, subsets well-defined, or we can do also a key cross-validation. Well, in this paper, we tackle this problem of uh, data stream mining, uh, that we perceive the data as a stream. We don't, we don't have access to all data at once. The instances are arrived continuously, uh, one, one at a time, of course. Well, when an instance arrives, we must classify this instance that has n features. Well, the models classify this instance. Then, when we the label of this instance is available, we can update the model. And then we must do these steps over and over until there's no more instances to classify. Well, the predictive models must take into account the limitations in memory because it is unfeasible to store high amount of instances and um, and uh, consider some uh, constraints about processing time because uh, instances must be processed faster than the arrival of another instances. Otherwise, the data must be discarded because we can't uh, do multiple passes over data. Uh, we do. We want to do this on the fly. Well, the current state-of-the-art models are based on ensembles. That means that um, when an instance arrives, you request the, your n-base models classifies this instance, and then you combine this vote of these base models, and then you have a strong learner. The, the votes of these learners can be also weighted. And the problem we tackled in this uh, paper, it was the dynamic selection of classifiers. That means we don't select all the learners to combine the, the final vote of the ensemble. That means we select uh, the learners that have a positive impact in the final vote. Well, uh, DCS in the batch uh, machine learning uh, literature, most of the methods use as kin nearest neighbors. I will cite two really famous here, for example, the key Nora eliminate. This method, uh, the authors uh, propose uh, to select uh, the end classifiers with highest accuracy in the key nearest neighbors of this instance of, of the instance that you want to classify. Uh, this is known as the region of competence, or the also the Kinora union. That is, uh, you select the classifiers for vote that has at least uh, one uh, right prediction in this region of competence. And then the votes of these uh, learners are weighted by their accuracy in this region of competence. Well, current DCS methods in the stream learning um, literature combine both batch and stream methods being a hybrid methods. Well, unfortunately, in these scenarios where there's time limitations, this can be unfeasible due to the batch methods and uh, considering for example Kinara uh, eliminating streaming that you will have the ensemble cost you have the key nearest neighbors cost to seek all the key nearest neighbors and also you must store the instances and the, the performance of the learners in the region of competence well we proposed a more lightweight method that is based on mass functions that is this is the mass function of right predictions of uh, the ensemble, that means in each bin here you have, for example, how many learners have uh, five uh, right predictions in the last n instances. So our region of competences is the last n instances. We apply three strategies, that is, um, we used a fixed threshold, we tested uh, different values for this. We also tested the mean, if the mean is over the fixed threshold. And also we tested the mode larger than the fixed threshold. And then this means that uh, the classifiers considered for vote are those with the number of right predictions that are higher to these uh, approaches. We also propose to sum, considered uh, the mass function as a sum of mass functions of uh, previous instances. We apply this strategy to the mode uh, uh, approach to see how learners are performing the most in these uh, instances and in previous instances also. This is here the mathematical definition. We have the delta parameter. The ensembles evaluated in this work uh, were the adaptive random forest. This is a version for a stream learning. From uh, This is a version of the classic random forest algorithm for stream learning. 
that considers all the, the specialties of learning for adding some details such as concept drift detectors that instances in stream learning can be not uh, stationary, they can have concept drift that we call. Also, uh, we evaluated stream random patches is a version of random patches that draw, data is drawn from the subsets of uh, features. And uh, we also evaluated the boosting-like uh, online learning ensemble that is a, uh, a version of the classic OSA boosting. That is, um, the authors have an online version of boosting for one past learning with uh, instances. We propose in this, meta, in this paper also some modifications in Bow. In Bo. In the original, we weight the correct classifications and wrong classifications by uh, half of the instances uh, seen so far. That means that if a, a learner correctly classifies an instance, then the, the lambda parameter used for uh, the instance weighting is uh, weighted by the half of the observations alongside the previous predictions done. We decided that uh, to to extend this to consider higher values, such as the whole uh, observations. This made uh, the learners more specialized, but uh, there are some problems uh, regarding this because uh, these lambda parameters here, it affects the learners in a uh, long term. And uh, we had some data sets where uh, the accuracy had some uh, de decrease. And then we, we applied the DCS methods that potentiate bow and uh, can uh, then uh, overcome this problem. In the experimental protocol, we've done uh, the test and then train uh, evaluation, that is uh, an instance arrives for test, then we have the label to train this instance and we do this until there's no more instance to classify. We All the ensembles that we tested with uh, had uh, 100 or 15 trees and with grace purity 50. Uh, that is, um, hoofing trees are uh, a state-of-the-art uh, uh, tree method in stream learning, and this means that uh, the grace period being equals 50 means that uh, if a node has 50 observations, then a, a split attempt will occur based on the hoofing bound. Okay, we also uh, tested fixed thresholds between three and six, that I explained earlier. The best results uh, that uh, we were reported were five. We also um, tested some values for the delta parameter between one and four, and the best reported results were three. You can see this in the paper's website that we've made. We tested uh, and then uh, the, our method with 14 data sets, nine real data sets, and five synthetic. The region of competence was set to the last 10 instances observed so that we can store all the base learners' performance without uh, so much cost. Those are the results. Um, the, uh, in tables are not so easy to see if they were helpful at all. Then we performed a Nemani Friedman test to see the differences in ranking and how are the critical differences between them. That means uh, if a uh, a pair of methods are, is different from the crypto difference. They are statistically different, as we say. We can see here that uh, ARF, uh, the adaptive random forest, presented better results than the native counterpart, that is, uh, without a dynamic selection of classifiers. Also, Bo presented really good results compared to native. Uh, we had some problems with SRP because we believe that um, SRP trees grow faster making the mass functions of our predictions change abruptly, and uh, fixed thresholds probably can't uh, deal with this problem. We can also see that uh, our version, the, our modification to Bow in L1 was uh, really helpful. Uh, it, it made the results uh, really different, and uh, for Bow L2, the critical difference were not so uh, significant. We can see all, uh, here an MNE test for all the classifiers. You can see that our methods uh, surpass some of the standard ones that we listed here. Also can see that the best uh, re reported result was, was with the mode approach. And the RAS SRP didn't, didn't report it well, but our, met our configuration methods uh, performed better than SRP, while the native counterparts of uh, adaptive random forest and bow didn't uh, perform as well. So here are the references for all the papers that we reference here. Thank you so much for your attention. You can reach me through this email. Okay. 
and thank you so much.